What's going on there, folks? Good morning. Good afternoon to some. It's the Earth Master here on this Monday, January 9th, 2023. It's about 10.55 a.m. here along the West Coast. And a very active Monday. Did have a 7.6 earthquake coming in to the Indonesia region. And also a very strong X-flare coming in to the uh, sun right now. Peaking up here around the X 1.8 or so, it looks like. Potentially 1.98 uh, for that X flare on the X ray uh, flare class. One of the strongest flares here in a little while. Uh, the latest SDO image here. Uh, sometimes it, it takes a little bit for this data to come in. This is about 10 minutes behind. So we're just starting to see the flare potential here. Uh, the, the signature of it on a far side sunspot, which is a little on the uh, crazy side because I was expecting it from uh, this massive sunspot region right here. Uh, let's go ahead and check out some specifics here on this sunspot region. Now it's going to be 3184, this uh, sunspot region that just produced the X flare uh, around the southeastern limb. Now 3182, I believe this one right here, the massive one, uh, harbors the most for an X flare, but the sun's got uh, a few tricks up its sleeve today, it looks like, and uh, 3184 is making its presence known with a, uh, a very strong flare current currently coming in. X 1.8 creating that high frequency radio blackout on the sunlit side of the earth centered uh, directly looks like over towards the southeastern side of the Pacific Ocean around uh, well off the coast of South America. So rather strong flare kicking in right now. Now when we do see these flares they do tend to have a blackout effect on high frequency uh, communications and uh, low frequency navigation systems uh, so this ain't this ain't something that's going to knock out satellites out of the orbit uh, but they do create some uh, issues with um, certain radio frequencies and certain uh, uh, communication uh, devices there now let me run in here real quick and see yeah it looks like it has peaked out and noticing that little decline in activity so m1 or uh, x what is it 1.98 is the maximum observed level so far uh, from the sunspot we've had a 30 uh, percent chance up probability of seeing a uh, x flare but uh, that really wasn't directed over there at 3184 it was more concerning uh, with the 3181 and 3182 sunspots which harbor some uh, complex magnetic structures there with their um, their sunspot regions let me see here let me bring this up make sure we got the most recent imagery from the sdo it seems like it updates every 10 minutes or so uh, so we should be getting another update really soon that's got to be where it's coming from notice the brightness all these other regions here um, they do harbor some uh, potential for some x flares but uh, this one here is the one that's currently producing that uh, strong flare right now <clears throat> 1.8 goodness what a way to start off a monday it, very wet here in california just had a another inch and a half of rainfall overnight uh, everything is soaked i'm not even joking folks i don't know how much more rainfall we can get but it's in the forecast and we'll take it all because we need to put an end to this complete drought uh, ridiculous drought conditions that we've had over the past couple years all right uh, let's see so earthquake activity we'll check on that signature here in a little bit because i want to see what it looks like when it's updated it's going to be probably a beauty uh it is not directly facing earth i don't believe it was eruptive ejective uh, meaning that it spewed off a cme uh, but even if it did it would be earth uh, away directed away from earth uh, but still within our view so we'll check back on that here in just a second uh, or just a minute or so <clears throat> 7.6 earthquake coming into the indonesia area shaking things up pretty nicely this monday morning as well now we did see um another aftershock here a 5.4 a little bit deeper than the main quake the band of sea region is a hot spot of some large earthquake activity and numerous <laughs> as you guys can see here uh this thing is loaded with earthquakes it's one of the the main areas around the globe that sees you know a lot of intense earthquakes in a short amount of time and this just goes back since about 1900 or so you can see some rather large quakes uh, some sevens <clears throat> and possibly some eights in this region as well 
Um, far as anything above an eight, uh, kind of hard to tell. But either way, large earthquakes are not out of the question in this area of the Indonesia area region here. So we did see that 7.0 over here around the Vanuatu area before all of this activity. We were watching some deeper movement quakes here around the Tonga Trench, um, five, almost 600 kilometer deep earthquakes over the period of last week. And I think we had a couple this weekend as well. But the majority over last weekend, very minimal adjustment between our seismic gap zones here. Uh, we were watching the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu area for some potential movement. And that hit yesterday with that 7.0 within this region. Uh, and then today, uh, got that westward increasing pressure movement. Uh, when we get earthquake activity uh, on the large scale, we tend to watch for certain regions here. Uh, yes, an earthquake is releasing stress in a general area, but also applying stress uh, in other zones. And it could be locally, or it could be distantly along a plate boundary. And most of the time it's distantly along a plate boundary, such as this major uh, plate tectonic area down here. Very complex and super active. So that movement worked its way uh, westward here by quite a few hundred miles, um, more than a thousand miles or so, a couple thousand it looks like here on the scale, um, to the area where the 7.6 hit today. Now we did see some movement here yesterday, but it's somewhat into our, into our seismic gap zone uh, where that 7.6 hit today. Uh, so that's that westward forward pressure movement gradient that's happening when we see some uh, deeper quakes. It does put a lot of strain up on certain areas. Um, I guess this would be downstream. Now upstream, if you think about it, these uh, subduction zones, where does the strain all build up around the along the subduction zone areas? But if you remember, last month we seen a whole bunch of sixes and sevens in this area. So that's why we're not seeing any further activity upstream around the Tonga Trench area, uh, because there was already quite a bit of earthquake activity in this region last month. Uh, renewed deep activity in Fiji, not enough strain for uh, further activity here along the trench. So we see that westward pressure movement, uh, but we still haven't seen any major activity across New Zealand or about the southern end of the Kermadec Trench. Yes, some smaller earthquake activity, but we've got to watch that zone pretty closely. Uh, and that's, um, that's a region to watch uh, for some large scale activity, I believe soon. All right, uh, let me check this uh, data here real quick. I just, I'm, I'm excited to see if this thing, uh, what, oh, look at that, beautiful. Let me get the most recent image here. Look at that baby, wow. That is what you call an X flare. Now, I don't know if this has been, um, if this is peaked out at this time, 1855. It's possible this is gonna be the maximum signature. Um, so I want to leave this up so I can get this as a screenshot for this video. That's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, it has peaked out here in the, uh, now going down. X 1.9 is the maximum level, observed level, from sunspot number uh, 3184, right? That's going to be our new member here on the Earth side of the sun. Kind of watch that. I think right now we have three sunspot probabilities of seeing X flares. Um, a couple of these harbor some very complex magnetic structure. And uh, this one here obviously uh, does as well, it looks like. Just getting a little bit better view as it rotates uh, into the Earth direction. So we'll continue to watch that, monitor that uh, for some potential X flare uh, probabilities. All right, back to earthquake activity here. Uh, the Big Island, seen some movement. Uh, looks like Pahala area, mostly confined to that region. South America did see some activity overnight. Most of it from yesterday though, quite a few fours up and down the board of the Peru Chile Trench. Some of it deep, some shallow, just kind of adjusting out down there. Uh, California has been awfully quiet. Yes, we have had some microquake activity. No major swarms, no major movement at all here along the West Coast. Uh, looking at the 2.5 map and above, we did see, it never fails, <laughs> it never fails. We did see some activity uh, into the north of the Ridgecrest area, right on the southern Sierra Nevada fault zone. Uh, now these guys are set to receive a whole bunch of rain and snow. Um, I think that's today and uh, it was last night, night as well. 
So watch these fault zones, folks. Right now they're very quiet, and I find that uh, somewhat strange. Uh, but we do need to watch these faults as rainfall takes a little while to soak down in there and lubricate these fault systems that have been strained for a little while. But I wouldn't doubt it. It wouldn't cross. It wouldn't uh, be out of the question to see possibly a five or six uh, on some of these fault systems here in Northern California. Uh, just going to take a little while, I believe, uh, to get that uh, lubrication technique down into the faults. Um, it, it makes sense and we've, re we've received a lot of rainfall here and we got much more in the forecast uh, that's not going away all right uh, let's see as far as any other large-scale activity goes here there's there's not a whole lot um, across the globe all right let me jump into the weather real quick and cover the activity just real quick here here's that uh, storm system down south look at that massive amount we're talking about maybe 12 inches or more of rainfall up into the uh, Mammoth Lakes area. And of course, some heavy, no, Mammoth Lakes is going to get snow. That's going to be a lot of feet of snow up here. But into areas that don't see the snow below the snow level, looking at maybe a foot of rainfall over here along the coastline as well. Some impressive rainfall rates. Now, we did pick up another inch and a half up here in Northern California in my area, just outside of Chico. But uh, nothing like these guys are getting today. All right, I want to show you guys the storm door. Uh, we got a little break today. Um, I see some blue sky, uh, but there's still a lot of ponding water before the next system comes in late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Now, this one's not going to be as strong of a system as we've seen. Uh, not, not those super impressive uh, rainfall rates, but still good steady rain. Um, and that's going to be for tomorrow and Wednesday. Another storm coming in, it looks like Wednesday night. Uh, and then we got high pressure building off here in the east uh, around the Colorado area which is kind of pushing that storm door slightly west. Notice the uh, moisture here is starting to back away from California and scoot up north, but I don't believe that high pressure is going to be strong enough to completely block what we need here, and that's lots more rain. I know it sounds crazy, right? But I'm not going to be complaining when we're in a, when we are in a drought. Uh, so that's going to be on Friday uh, into Saturday. Looks like Southern California late Saturday into Sunday is going to get more rainfall as well. Uh, now, looking into early next week as well, there's scattered conditions uh, or scattered showers and rainfall throughout Monday. Tuesday looks to be another storm system, but notice that trend. It's shifted a little bit more north, uh, which is not getting Southern California as far as the rainfall goes. Uh, but we're still seeing some rain, snow in Northern California. And then after that, it looks like high pressure has taken over for a little while. So the last storm system is going to be roughly on... Oh, looks like maybe Wednesday night, Thursday on the 19th time frame uh, before we see high pressure tend to take over and uh, create some warmer conditions. But, um, you know, that's just a couple days break. I think we got a little bit more precipitation on the horizon uh, for February, according to the long-term models. But we'll check that out a little bit later on, folks. Uh, in the meantime... Stay safe out there. And again, that is a beauty. Look over here as well. It looks like there was maybe another flare. Uh, got two flares at the same time kicking off. I don't believe this is an X flare, um, but it looks like a strong flare. And this one's way on the northeastern side of the, of the sun. But uh, wow, things are getting very active here in the solar weather department. All right, folks, stay safe. We will be back later on this evening. No, the earth is not turning backwards. Don't want to cause panic out there. Um, but stay safe and stay dry. We'll catch you guys a little bit later on. Peace out.